welcome to fotek matra today we are going to see about the topic maillard browning so first we'll see what browning of food is it is when the food product turns brown color due to the chemical reaction happening within the product and this brown color may be differ from product to product for example it varies from yellow brown to reddish brown to black brown okay so normally this browning of foods can be classified into two types one is enzymatic browning and non enzymatic browning enzymatic browning the enzyme takes a main role in making the product and in turns into a brown color whereas in non enzymatic browning there is no participation of enzyme ex other than that enzyme other products will take part okay and this non enzymatic browning can be classified further into two types one is maillard browning and caramelization okay and now in this video we are going to see about maillard browning let me tell you some of the examples so that you can understand uh, what is maillard browning is okay um for example golden brown breads okay and have you seen the color of the crust that is the um bread crust color and also have you ever wondered the aroma when the bread is freshly baked okay and similarly roasted coffee bean and when the coffee bean is unroasted there will not be any aroma whereas when it comes to roasting you get a very nice emmy aroma from the roasted coffee bean and similarly the crust of the roasted meat the brown color uh, the appealing color which is given on the crust uh, of the surface of the meat either it's a chicken or mutton okay and uh, the brown color the golden brown color of french fries okay so all these happens because of the maillard browning so all these examples were emmy isn't it so do you know why it is named so this non enzymatic browning is also called as maillard browning or maillard reaction okay and this name is came from a french chemist or a, and a physician louis camel maillard so he is the person uh, who described the reaction between amino acids and sugar and he found out they uh, when undergo some uh, uh, processing at elevated temperature um, these reactions produce aromatic components in simpler term it is the reaction between amino acid and reducing sugar in the presence of heat maillard browning happens okay so amino acid that is you know it is a building block of proteins so these amino acid molecules usually combine to make proteins and they are the building block of life and these amino acid is a, one of the main component in maillard browning and similarly reducing sugar so reducing sugar is um, the sugar which contains a free aldehyde or a ketone group and they acts as a reducing agent it reduces other components and it itself gets oxidized okay for example um, uh, glucose lactose fructose galactose so they are the some of the examples for reducing sugar okay so when these two components react together in the presence of high temperature for the temperature ranges between 140 to 165 degree celsius okay at this temperature uh, range this maillard browning happens so this turns the product into a brown color that is browning reaction happens and it produces some of the flavor flavor components some of the aroma components are produced and apart from this lots of chemical components are also produced during this process so when this maillard reactions happen so when the combination that is the amines uh, amino acids any type of amino acids and reducing sugars react with each other and this process this reaction will be very slow at during storage that is at normal temperature very slow but it will become very rapid at a higher temperature elevated temperature and that temperature is in the range of 140 to 165 degrees celsius and this happens uh, during frying roasting baking that is why you are able to get the flavor aroma and the color during uh, the this process like frying of any like uh, uh, french fries frying of potato or else roasting of um, meat and baking of bakery products so and the conditions that promotes maillard browning includes the alkaline conditions and or else low moisture level and a high temperature now we'll see the mechanism behind maillard browning so during this 
Maillard Browning reaction it happens in three steps but it contains um, so I am telling a simple um, three steps which undergoes during the Maillard Browning whereas um, in depth it will have lots of small reactions happening so I am not going into that particular pro uh, all those complex steps just I am telling the main steps okay um, so in the first step the amino group that is the amino group NH3 okay so the amino group of any amino acid and the carbonyl group of the reducing sugar so they undergo reaction the condensation reaction to form a product called glucosyl amine okay along with water so when these undergoes reaction it forms glucosyl amine and water and this glucosyl amine is kind highly unstable so immediately it goes undergoes a, a rearrangement of the molecules and that rearrangement is called as amidory rearrangement and it forms a product called ketose amine okay and this ketose amine contain both ketose and amine group and that is called as amidory compound okay so in the third step this ketose amines undergo different transformation so here happens so many complex uh, chemical reactions and finally it forms a product called melanoidins and uh, which is a brown nitrogenous polymer this is a potential end product of this Maillard reaction melanoidins okay. so this melanoid melanoidins have a very strong um, multi flavor okay and this uh, is brown color a high molecular weight heterogeneous polymer and this is responsible for the brown color aroma and flavor of the product when it undergoes Maillard reaction and this uh, melanoidins is found in food products which were undergo Maillard reaction for example the color of the <coughs> bread crust and uh, also the flavor and aroma and similarly the uh, bakery product all other bakery products and roasting of coffee for example this um, uh, quantity of melanoidins in um, roasted coffee bean is up to 25 percentage whereas um, when further roasting the quantity uh, the amount increases okay so next we will see about the beneficial and detrimental effect that is the advantages and the disadvantages of this Maillard reaction so the advantages is it improves the sensory quality like when the color changes it makes the product into one appealing nature for example you find a normal unprocessed or uncooked meat into a roasted meat you find it emmy right and similarly the flavor also so this gives a very pleasant aroma uh, which makes it so appealing and appetizing okay and also improve the texture of the product so this come this these are all the advantages of Maillard browning whereas uh, when it comes to the disadvantages of Maillard browning one of the major product uh, which is all always um, uh, <coughs> comes with Maillard browning is a product that is acrylamide have you maybe you would have heard about acrylamide that is a cancer causing agent particularly in highly processed order burnt uh, burnt meals okay that's the end product of such uh, burnt meals okay so here this acrylamide is produced when this glucose and amino acid aspartame reacts together at high temperature okay so this acrylamide is also one of the end product of Maillard browning <coughs> and other uh, disadvantages include it exhibits anti-nutritive effects like it destructs the vitamins and inhibits the digestive enzymes and also it reduces the uh, bioavailability of proteins uh, intake when you intake the protein the bioavailability of the protein let's get decreased and also it develops sometimes uh, bitter flavors in the product and sometimes it darkens the color of the food which is not acceptable okay thanks for watching my channel if you like the video kindly comment and share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe